Well, here it is. The WBR Regen, the Weedstone Bridge Receiver. It's a regenerative receiver. A quick tour of the front panel. On the top left-hand corner, that is the regeneration control. Beneath that is the RF attenuation. Then underneath that, to the left, the headphone socket. And then there's a switch that I haven't used yet, but I, I think I might do in the future. <laughs> um, the main tuning knob. And then to the right-hand side, an AF gain control, which is not part of the original design. Uh, but N1BYT did mention that if you wanted a little bit more audio gain, you could actually substitute the audio chain that he uses in his OCR2 receiver, which is the same... Uh, it, it's still got an LM386 IC for the output, uh, but it's driven by a 2N3904 preamp, so I decided to add an AF gain control there. Uh, looking at the inside of the receiver, I actually prefer looking at the insides. I think it's a shame sometimes when we build things and then we put them in enclosures so you can't see the innards. I, I love looking at innards. Well, of radios, I mean, not of animals or people. Uh, so anyway, if you look at the... Um, one thing I want to point out is this piece of um, enamel copper wire, the stiff wire that runs from the antenna socket to the RF attenuation control. I've changed that now. I, I think it looks really neat in the photo, actually, the way it's bent. It's sort of it's a bit of a hark back to old time radio. But what I found was that the RF attenuation control uh, didn't attenuate an awful lot because when it was turned to minimum, I think what was happening was that stiff copper wire that goes from the antenna socket, still runs pretty close to the, the 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 main coil, the main inductor on that toroid. And uh, and so it was still picking up a lot of signal just from, uh, you know, just from induction, uh, just from the proximity of that stiff copper wire. Well, I wanted the RF attenuation control to attenuate because that's what they're supposed to do. So I, I substituted that stiff copper wire for just a piece of coax. It doesn't look quite as good, but it's actually a bit more effective. Um, so, um, once again, you'll notice that as well as the main tuning control, the regeneration control is a wire wound. That wasn't in the original plan, um, and you don't have to use a... That, that's a multi-turn wire wound, by the way. You don't have to use that. Um, in the original design is a, is a cheaper way of doing it, uh, which is just a regular 10k carbon part, and then there's a 10k preset used just to set... The, the general area where regeneration occurs. Uh, but I had an extra wire wound hanging around and I kind of wanted a, a reason to use them because it's actually the regeneration is just beautiful with the wire wound. It's really smooth. It, it's just great. So there's the inside of the receiver. And uh, now I want to show you a video, uh, a video of the receiver in use. Please excuse the poor quality of the video. I've got a very old camera for doing video. Uh, but this here's the video, and then we'll come back and uh, listen to a little bit more audio from the receiver. Anyway, let's zip down to the bottom part of the band. The regeneration on this set is very smooth. Let's give ourselves a little bit of regeneration. And there's the bottom part of the band right there. That's 7,000 kilohertz. And... Whoa! Action in the DX portion of the band. Listen to that. Even with a relatively narrow filter on a commercial receiver, this would probably still sound like a beautiful cacophony. Let's um, see what else we can find in the CW portion of the band. The receiver, the drift is really minimal. It's so great. I love this. You can actually hear the discrete steps and the tuning caused by the wire wound pot. Um, the tuning is a bit more spread out at the top part of the band, but it's um, it's actually a bit more critical in the CW portion of the band, which for me is fine because I have a separate rig for the CW portion of 40. I made this rig mainly for listening to sideband and AM in the 40 meter band, AM broadcast and also AM amateur signals. So. The way that my receiver is set up, it doesn't cover the entire 40 meter broadcast band, but it does cover some of it, and here's some of the stuff I've received.
Laudator Jesus Christus. This is the English program of Vatican Radio. And then there's the stuff that's a little harder to identify, but but adds an air of mystery to the shortwave bands, like 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 this mysterious chanting you can hear. I actually didn't uh, find out what it was. I, I'm sure by studying the shortwave schedule, I probably could. But uh, curious and huh? cool. <laughs> Anyway, that's the Wheatstone Bridge receiver. Um, I just realized I didn't really get many clips of single sideband reception. Sorry about that. It was just the times that I was recording. Um, actually, propagation has been pretty shaky on HF recently anyway, and it just seems that all, all the times I was recording, uh, there was CW activity, but not a whole lot of phone activity, so apologies for that. But it does sound good on sideband. Uh, you heard it anyway, at least on AM and on, on CW too. Uh, what else? There's so many things I could mention about this receiver. Um, but, um, hey, if you were a bit concerned about the, the fact that the, the tuning is a little bit critical in the CW portion of the band, you could definitely set up the tuning so it just covered the 100 kilohertz portion of, of the 40 meter band so that then that whole portion would be spread out over 10 turns and then you get really great tuning. So I don't think that would be a problem. All right, I think I'd just better shut up now because this video is getting kind of long. But there it is, the Wheatstone Bridge Receiver. It's a great regen. It really is a great regen. <laughs> 